In this session, we're going to develop a reducible representation and calculate the number of IR active vibrational modes for a subset of the modes. So we're going to use a much larger molecule, this molybdenum complex. So if you wanted to, um, to learn something about what you would expect to see in the CO stretching region for this molybdenum complex, you could calculate all of the degrees of freedom and all of the, the vibrational modes. But there's a lot of atoms here, and that would be a lot of work. So instead, we're going to focus on just the CO stretching part of the spectrum. From organic, do you remember where the CO stretching modes are found? These are going to be kind of like carbonyls in the 1800-ish region, 1800 wave numbers of the IR spectrum. Now, in order to calculate those modes, we'll once again need to identify the point group. So, what is the point group of this molybdenum complex? The point group of this molybdenum complex is C3V, so we'll need the C3V character table. Here it is. Now, in order to um, develop a reducible representation for just the CO stretching modes, we're going to think about these three little green arrows that are along the CO bonds, and we're just going to think about which of those bonds stay the same as we um, as we move uh, like as we do each of the symmetry operations of the molecule? Okay, so in this case, we're in the C3V point group, and we've got the E, the C3, and the sigma V operations. So if you if we develop a reducible representation for just the CO modes. Then let's think about it. if you pick the molecule up and put it back down again, how many of those E modes stay where they are? The answer is all three of them. So we'll put a three there. If you rotate around the C3 axis, how many of those arrows stay in the same place? The answer is none of them. And if you do a sigma V where you cut through one of the CO bonds, how many of them stay the same are unchanged? only one of them, the one that's in the mirror plane. So we can develop a reducible representation for just the CO stretching modes. So now we can reduce that representation using our reduction formula. And um, so for example, we can start with the, the A1 vibrational mode. Um, the order of this point group is six. And so we can work through the reduction formula so E has one mode in that class times three in our reducible representation times one in the A1. Okay, and then we can continue that through each, sort of work through each of our operations in this uh, irreducible representation. And so we get that there's one A1 vibrational, CO vibrational mode. We do the same thing for A2, we divide by the order, um, 1 times 3 times 1 plus 2 times 0 times 1, those zeros end up really helping you out, times 3 times 1 times negative 1, now that negative 1 is going to mean that we have 0 A2 CO modes. And then for E, by the order, we get 1 times 3, and the character is 2 of that irreducible representation, 2 times 0 times negative 1, and 3 times 1 times 0. Okay, so once again, we get 6 divided by 6 equals 1. So the sum of irreducible representations for the CO stretching modes in this complex are an A1 and an E. Now we can look at our character table and since we're interested in the IR spectrum we're looking at the X, Y, and Z functions and we see that they have A1 and E symmetry as well. So we would expect to see two modes at different energies. So we would expect to see, yeah, that's we would expect to see two different signals in the in the um, CO stretching region. 
So if we look at the experimental spectrum, we in fact see two different peaks. So here, this is an IR spectrum represented as absorbance instead of as percent transmittance, but you get the same idea. In that 1800 to 2000 range, we get two signals at two different energies representing the different um, CO modes for this complex. Now I told you at the beginning that ultimately I'm going to want you to predict the difference between two isomers. So this facial isomer, there's another way that those CO modes could be uh, arranged and we could calculate the number of CO stretching modes we would expect to see in the mirror isomer where they're arranged differently and use that to be able to distinguish between the two isomers.